Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. A San Antonio mother killed just before the family was set to have dinner. Tonight, the reality her family is now dealing with as police search for her killer. Also, we've shown you those empty shelves resulting from an infant formula shortage. Now a resource that's meant to help feed children is really feeling the strain. We're going to hear from them coming up. And plus, eight months of negotiating leading to no deal. Why the cancellation of the symphony season may not completely silence the strings. But first. Tonight, one San Antonio family is in unbelievable pain. They lost the mother, their mother, the day before Mother's Day. And the person responsible for her death is still on the loose. The victim's husband and kids understandably heartbroken. They couldn't speak on camera. But they gave a family friend permission to speak with us. Our John Paul Barajas reports. You took away somebody's wife, somebody's mother, somebody's daughter, only daughter. The pain, frustration, and sadness is overwhelming for family and friends of 44-year-old Jessica Harper. She died in a hit-and-run crash at the Calabra and Alamo Downs Parkway intersection Saturday, just one mile away from her house. She was bringing her family food, according to longtime friend Esther Carrasco. They went through their first... Mother's Day without her. Her gifts are still in the back of the car. She's not going to be here for a sweet 16, and she's not going to be here for graduation. Reality is starting to set in for Harper's husband and two young teens she leaves behind. According to police, a witness told them a gray Ford Focus was taking a left onto Calabra when a black Yukon disregarded the red light, colliding with Harper's car, sending car parts flying down the street and also on the sidewalk. Police said that suspect got out of that Yukon and took off on foot. How could you leave her? Would it have made a difference if he would have or she would have stayed and, and called 911 right away? I mean, could that have saved your life? That's where you kind of get angry. Carrasco explains the family is trying to take things one step at a time and is relying on support from family and friends. It's why she's made it a point to visit every day since the tragedy. I have to do it just because. <laughs> because I need to know that they're OK for her. Police say Harper's own mother was actually in the car with her at the time of the crash. Now, she did survive, but family tells us she is still in the hospital. As for that black Yukon, it is still unclear if that car was stolen or not. We asked police if the owner of that black Yukon was a possible suspect. All they could tell us at this time was the person that they are looking for has still not been caught. At Public Safety Headquarters, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Let's hope they catch that person. Thank you, John Paul. New tonight, a motorcyclist killed in a crash. Police say it happened on Calabra and Alamo Parkway on the far west side. Investigators say a BMW making a U-turn when a motorcyclist hit the side of the car. The man on the motorcycle died. The driver of that BMW stayed at the scene, is not expected to face charges. It happened in just seconds. A woman says that she was talking with her neighbor when a car hit and killed her. A car came and just picked her up in front of me. I don't know how to explain other than fast, and she landed over there. The she that she's talking about is Irma Lozano. Her neighbor, Lily, who you just heard from right there, says that she called out to Lozano's grandson to call police. Officers say the crash happened around 11 o'clock this morning along Oak Hill Road near Viva Max Drive. That's across the street from Dolores B. Linton Elementary School. Police say the driver is facing a charge of intoxication manslaughter. There are pain in the wallet. Rising property taxes being discussed among San Antonio City Council. Right now, staff recommending raising the homestead exemption to 10% to include homeowners and commercial property. They also want to increase exemptions for disabled and senior homeowners. City Council will take up those proposals next month. The tax increase follows the increase in appraisal values that many homeowners saw in Bear County. On average, a single family residence up nearly 28% this year alone. By the way, there is a way to keep and combat those rising property taxes right now. That's by protesting your property appraisal. The deadline's coming up, though. You have until May 16th, that's Monday, to file your protest. Less than a week away now. The first step is to file your notice of appeal. That form on the back of your appraisal notice. You can also do it online. We're going to show you how to do it yourself on KSAT.com. 
The latest now in that showdown over abortion rights, a move to begin the process of protecting Roe versus Wade has failed. Senate Democrats knew they didn't have the votes to push that measure through, but they wanted every senator to go on record. Now, the Democrats' bill would make the abortion rights outlined in Roe versus Wade federal law. It would also override state laws banning abortion before 24 weeks and also abolish state restrictions like mandatory ultrasounds and waiting periods. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell called that measure radical. Democrats' bill would functionally allow elective abortion through all nine months. All of this is coming after a draft opinion from the Supreme Court was leaked. It suggests that abortion rights could be overturned. And if that happens, abortion rights activists say that contraception could be targeted next. The shows will not go on. A proposed cut in staff and benefits first led to a strike within the San Antonio Symphony. Now with the Stalin negotiations, the Symphony Society of San Antonio says it has canceled the rest of the season at the Tobin Center. But the musicians who are on strike tell the night team's Patty Santos their shows will continue, just not at the Tobin. Musicians of the San Antonio Symphony say they are not giving up. I have complete confidence that San Antonio is a city that values its orchestra and can support its orchestra. After eight months on strike and a failure to reach an agreement with musicians, the Symphony Society of San Antonio has canceled the remainder of its season through June. In a statement saying, quote, we remain hopeful that if we can return to negotiations, we could have some concert activity in the coming months. Musicians are crossing the street playing some concerts at First Baptist Church of San Antonio Thursday. The important thing about performances is the music and our connection with our audience. And we're playing the music here and we're connecting with our audience here. Negotiations have stalled. The chair of the Musicians Negotiating Committee says at the base of staff and salary cuts is the symphony's unwillingness to raise the spending budget above $5 million. That is a number that does not sustain a full-time, full-size professional orchestra. The symphony statement says the nonprofit has a duty to operate in a manner that no longer relies on emergency funds. Quote, we need to follow the guidance we've been given in the past focus on realistic budgeting, one that ensures a viable and thriving symphony for generations to come. And musicians are really optimistic that the San Antonio community will find a way to continue to support the orchestra. And tomorrow on Friday, they're going to be playing here at the First Baptist Church of San Antonio. You can find out how to get tickets on KSAT.com. Steve, Stephania. Patty, thank you. Tomorrow, City Council is going to vote on the new contract between the City of San Antonio and the police union. The police reform group Act 4SA is asking council members to vote that contract down. Now let's talk about the measure. It would boost officers' pay and also make it more difficult for fired police officers to get their jobs back. Ananda Thomas with Act 4SA says that that's a move in the right direction, but... She wants to see an amendment added that would expand the power for the Civilian Advisory Board. She says that board should be able to do more than just review issues. Thomas says that other cities allow similar boards to conduct their own investigations and independent audits. Now for a look at your headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. A code inspection gave way to a criminal investigation at a San Antonio home. Inside this home, investigators found what looks to be a gambling operation. Take a look at the inside now. This is on the southeast side on East South Cross near Loop 410. Along with the graffiti, clothes and trash, police found 24 slot machines and more than a dozen people inside. Drugs and two stolen vehicles also found on the property. Investigators have not said how many people were arrested in this case. A new $1.5 billion project set to offer some relief to drivers on I-35. Today, crews broke ground on the I-35 Northeast expansion project. The overall project will span three counties from Bear, Guadalupe to Comal. The central phase would start at the Loop 410 and I-35 interchange. Construction crews will create elevated lanes to reduce travel times. HOV lanes will also be added. The central phase of this project set to be completed in 2027. A new drug providing some hope for ALS patients. The progressive neuromuscular disease, also known as Lou Gehrig's. The new drug is out of Israel. It has seen success in delaying the onset and progression of the illness. Still in the early stages, but the FDA is now giving it an important designation that helps move it towards clinical trials. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash.
Well, another hot day today. At least we weren't triple digits, but we did top out in the mid 90s for a high temperature. 96 degrees. It's 11 degrees above average and just four degrees shy of the record high temperature today. We'll talk about heat for the rest of the week. Record challenging heat this weekend and how long it would take to get out of our drought and especially how much rain it would take to get out of our drought. Some interesting information there coming right up. From high temperatures to high prices, another record when it comes to gas prices. The ripple effect now stretching into an important resource for San Antonio. Also, we have seen how difficult it's been for families because of the formula shortage. It's the reason that South Texas families are turning to one resource. So we'll discuss the demand that resource is facing as families try to feed their babies. It's next on The Night Beat. Empty shelves, desperate parents. It has become a common sight around the country because there's just not enough infant formula. And now some parents are turning to milk banks for help. But what we've been doing is providing up to 39 ounces of milk to those families in crisis. Now, if you've got a new little baby who's been on formula for a week, 39 ounces is nice. It's going to buy you quite a few days. But if you have a four-month-old, 39 ounces might buy you a day and a smidgen. Yeah, it's not a lot of time. Texas is home to the largest milk bank in the country. Kim Updegrove from the Mother's Milk Bank at Austin says that the nonprofit is getting calls from families who typically rely on formula. The milk bank usually helps babies with medical needs, but now it's helping families who are just out of options. Now the need is growing. The milk bank sends out 22,000 ounces of pasteurized donor milk each week, and that is up from 15,000 ounces weekly from just last year. So what does that mean? Well, they need donors. Healthy, lactating moms who have extra milk can donate as long as they meet screening requirements. That screening is done at no cost to the mother. So any moms who are interested in helping can visit the Milk Bank's website at milkbank.org. The pain at the pump having a ripple effect. AAA says gas prices hit another record today with an average of $4 a gallon in San Antonio. Average diesel prices north of $5 a gallon. That price tag, another challenge for the supply chain. As the night team's Alicia Barrera reports, the San Antonio Food Bank says it is making it harder to feed families. Sabas Calvillo has driven this diesel truck for four years. I'm a Hope and a school driver, so I deliver to the, the senior centers here in San Antonio. Um, and then I go as far as um, Uvalde and Sabinal, uh, Lakey. He's part of the diesel guzzling fleet of about 50 San Antonio food bank trucks that help feed the hungry. Now we serve 29 counties here in southwest Texas. But lately, CEO and President Eric Cooper says it's getting harder to feed families as the spike in diesel prices has put them $20,000 over budget for this year. Roughly $1,000 per day is the increase in what we're paying today than what we were a year ago in increased costs around diesel. According to AAA, the average for diesel prices in San Antonio last week were just shy of $5. And this week, they're up even higher at $5.29. But it's not just these prices that worry drivers like Sabas. He says job security is also on his mind. How are they going to pay us and pay for the gas? You know, what's going to have to happen? I was filling up at 150, both filling up my main tank and the reefer. Now it's like, shoot, almost $250, $300 that I'm filling up twice a week. And although under a lot of pressure, Cooper says feeding 90,000 families a week is top priority and can't be done without drivers like Calvillo. We're going to do everything we can to make sure we're successful. And so San Antonio, if you can help us, now's the time. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Now, as you just heard, the San Antonio Food Bank in critical need of monetary donations to help sustain these food deliveries. If you would like to help, if you can help, we have a link to donate on our website right now, ksat.com. The Food Bank also reminds you of an easy way to donate food to those in need. The Stamp Out Hunger campaign happening on Saturday. You can leave non-perishable items like peanut butter, jelly, rice, and beans by your mailbox on that day. Your local letter carrier will then pick up those donated items. Now we're going to take a live look outside 79 degrees. We have Sky 12 flying over 
the quarry right now, and I'm just looking at that movie theater. I, I would think that place would be pretty packed when it gets super hot. Yeah, I think it's packed all the time out there. <laughs> the, the, you, you see the parking lot pretty full out yeah, there. Decently. Good, full. good movie weather. It is. Yes. Personally, <laughs> I know I'm always a little odd. Uh, I prefer the uh, meat aisles at my HEB, right? The refrigerated aisles. You just bring a lawn chair <laughs> and just sit there, hang, hang out there. We have races in the. <laughs> we have races in the. Cars. That's what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> the brisket aisle. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, I just salivate. Okay, we have to change topics here. We have a short amount of time to get in a lot of important information here. This is very interesting. This is from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, along with the National Center for Environmental Information. Of course, we have our drought. You see the drought monitor there. All those colors on the map, those reds, those oranges, indicating different levels of drought. But how much rain would it? take to pull out of our drought. Well, we're separated in the case at 12 viewing area in these different little climate zones we don't make these. These are just what uh, they're set at and it would take 17.1 inches of rain between now and the end of August to pull out of our current drought here in San Antonio and even east of town. And that does also include Medina County. You go into the hill country, 17.4 inches is what it would take. South and west of town where we have had some recent rainfall, actually 14.15 inches, still a significant amount. The probability of that happening by the end of summer, which is the end of August, meteorological summer, less than 2%. Now here's the caveat. If a tropical system happens to drift on shore and then sit over San Antonio and South and Central Texas, that would be the game changer. And I think what could really help us more than anything, but we can't rely on these measly little thunderstorms. See the mountain West Texas today, upper level high pressure system. It's split right now, but still influencing our weather. East Texas stretching all the way up into the Great Lakes. I mean, we're, we're talking nineties close to Chicago today. The dip in the jet stream in the upper level flow. That's the Western US only in the 60s today. That's where the cooler air is on the north side of the jet stream. And in that dip in the upper flow, some precipitation. Our rain chances, 10% Saturday. That's it for the foreseeable future. Right now we're sitting at 80 degrees. Kennedy 77, Carrizo Springs 82, along with Uvalde. And for the most part, upper 70s near 80. Tomorrow morning we'll start the day at 72 degrees. With the low gray clouds, low overcast early, it'll, it'll look, look like it could rain, but it's not going to. Then by the noon hour, we make it up to 88 degrees with plenty of sunshine through the afternoon, 96 the high temperature. That's here in San Antonio. You go closer to the Rio Grande and I think we'll be about 100 degrees. And as we go on into the weekend, warming up a little bit, record challenging heat. The record high Saturday is 97. The record on Sunday 96. Those are definitely in jeopardy and some records early next week. So it's unlikely that we could uh, break away from this drought without a big tropical system anytime soon. So no triple digits, but it will be warm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, that's hot. OK, so the NBA gave out its MVP award. Yes. A very interesting place. Yeah, because it wasn't here. It wasn't in the United States. It was across, well, halfway around the world. When we come back, we'll let you know where they handed that trophy out and why that is literally go halfway around the world to do it. And Mike McCarthy's return to Green Bay is set. Coming up. This week, the official announcement tonight, Nikola Jokic is the NBA's most valuable player. What made it special? That's his second straight this, in, in season he's done this. He's won the NBA's most coveted award. He now becomes the 15th player to win the NBA's MVP trophy more than once. That includes his first Tim Duncan in 2002 and 2003, and the most recent player to do so, Giannis Antetokounmpo, in 2019-2020. His numbers are off the charts again this season, even better than last year, 27.1 points per game, 13.8 rebounds, and almost eight assists to go along with his league-leading 19 triple doubles. His head coach, Mike Malone, flew halfway around the world to present the trophy to Jokic on his horse farm in Serbia. And who does he pattern his game after may surprise you? When I came into NBA, let's say like that, uh, of course, Tim Duncan. I think he's a great, great, great player. Of course, someone you, you can look up to. He was the, the perfect model of perfect idol, let's say like that.
And when you take a look at the voting, you can see it was Joel Embiid who came in second again with 26 first place ballots versus 65 for Jokic. Now, Embiid doesn't know what more he can do. The Sixers star averaged a career high 30.6 points per game, winning the NBA scoring title this season, making him the first international player to do so, the first center to capture that award in more than two decades. After word had leaked out early this week, this was what Embiid had to say about coming in second. I'm not mad. Um, no, that's two years in a row. Uh, you know, I've, I put myself uh, in that position. It didn't happen. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like at this point is is whatever. Whatever happens, happens. Um, you know, that's probably, you know, last year I campaigned about it. This year, you know, I answered uh, questions when I was asked. And, you know, in the next, you know, few years until I retire, it's almost like, you know, to me, it's just, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what else I, I, I have to do to win it. And to me, it's just like, at this point, it's like, it's whatever. Now to tonight's game in the Eastern Conference, the Bucks in Boston, where the series is tied at two all. It was a bloody fight to the finish. Celtics led by as many as 14 points in the fourth quarter until the Bucks made a charge. Giannis Antetokounmpo connects from behind the arc. Then Drew Holiday ties the game at 105 with his three. 11 seconds to play. The Bucks are up by one on the inbound. They get it to Marcus Smart, who drives baseline, but gets blocked by Holiday. Bucks hit their free throws to make it a three-point contest. Last chance for Boston. Smart bringing the ball up court, and it's Holiday again making the huge steal to win the game. Antetokounmpo with. 40 holiday at 24. The Bucks pull out the win 110 to 107. They will go back home with a chance to close out the series with a win on Friday. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Mike McCarthy will make his first trip to Green Bay as a head coach of the Dallas Cowboys on November the 13th in week 10 as part of the NFL's 2022 schedule that is being released today. This will be McCarthy's first trip to Lambeau Field for coaching the Packers for 13 seasons, including leading the pack with the 2010 Super Bowl title, which ironically was played in AT&T Stadium in Arlington and the worst ever snowstorm ever to hit North Texas that year. McCarthy was fired in December of 2018 after taking the year off, was hired by the Dallas Cowboys. This will be the team first meeting since 2019. The Packers hold the edge here 20 to 17 over Dallas, including the postseason. The last time the Cowboys played the Packers at Lambeau Field, 2016, Dallas won that game 30 to 16. All schedules will be released tomorrow. We are getting more information about Tom Brady's record-setting 10-year, $375 million broadcast contract from Fox when he decides to retire from playing football. The seven-time Super Bowl champion is about to enter his 23rd year in the NFL by deciding to unretire and suit up for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers again this season. But here's what's so insane about this contract. His career earnings as a football player are $332 million over two decades. Now he will make $375 million in just 10 years when he retires. He'll turn 45 before the NFL season kicks off this year. Can SASE beat another MLS team? Find out next. San Antonio FC taking on the Houston Dynamo in the round of 32 in the U.S. Open Cup. SAFC with some scoring chances early. No score in the 14th minute. Mohamed Abu on the free kick. He gets it into the penalty area, but the header is off the mark. Still no score in the 39th minute. San Antonio with another free kick that flicked up. And there is a header to Nicky Hernandez, who shot on goal, but is blocked. Game would remain scoreless through halftime, but Houston would score in the 89th minute. San Antonio FC falls 1-0. Pre preparations are underway for the first ever KSAT Pigskin Classic in the Alamo Dome, August the 27th, starting at 11 a.m. in the morning, going all the way to 1030 at night. Six San Antonio area teams competing in three games, starting first at Smith Valley and Reagan at 11.30, followed by Judson and Johnson at 3.30. Then the nightcap, Steel against Brennan at 7.30. It's much more than just three games. It's all about the bands, the dance teams, the cheer and pep squads, and most importantly, scholarships. If you'd like to be a part of this historic day that includes a 12-hour live television broadcast, just grab that QR code right there on your screen that takes you to our Pigskin Classic page at KSAT.com for tickets and even sweet sales. So be a part of it. You know, it's going, we're actually getting a lot of interest in this and the I, I just and wasn't anticipating this early, but we're getting a lot of early attention. On well, this. nothing like this has been done before ever. Locally. And people want to jump on right now. Absolutely. I want to be part of it. You, you will be a part right. of it, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> if you don't know. Be, yeah, <laughs> we'll be right back. If you don't already know. <laughs> a lucky Colorado toddler can thank his dad for his own personal amusement park. Scott Brazelton built a roller coaster for his three year old son in their Brighton, Colorado backyard. All Brazelton has to do is push the cart up to the first drop, then gravity does the rest. That is so cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah.